Welcome to Busy Bee by Cindy. A few folks have asked me how I created the bees on my Busy Bee quilt. And I'd like to show you how I did that. But first, I want to tell you that I downloaded this image from Google Images. It's actually a Shutterstock image, so I purchased it from Shutterstock. So whatever image you are using as your inspiration, please make sure to purchase it if it's available for purchase, or you can also find quite a few free items uh, in Google Images as well. So whatever you do, please just be conscientious about it. Right, let me show you how I made the quilt. Here are the supplies you'll need. You need a blue fabric that will act as the sky, yellow fabric for the body of the bee, black tulle for the wings of the bee, batting, tracing paper, flathead pins. These will come in handy when we're sewing the wings on. They've got a nice flat head to them so you can sew right next to your pin um, without getting your presser foot caught in uh, <clears throat> the pin. And then uh, some black thread. All right, let's get started. Okay, so to create this pattern, um, I went online to Google Images and I typed in black and white honeybee and a number of different images appeared. <clears throat> I chose this one, I liked it the best. Um, I kind of liked all that fuzzy hair looking stuff around the outside. I thought I could recreate that with um, my stitching. So I printed this out I saved it, printed it out to the size that I wanted my finished bee to be. Um, and then just inside that hairline, I traced the body of the bee. Um, I took that traced image and cut out some yellow bee bodies. And then I attached them to my sky fabric um, I happen to use Seam Esteem if you use Wonder Under or whatever method you use to applique your fabrics together if you're doing applique, uh, do that. Um, so I've attached the yellow bee body to my sky fabric. Um, and then for the wings, these wings, I just didn't care for them. Uh, I attempted to sew them together uh, with the tool. Uh, I tried it on a, a you know different sizes, uh, different wing patterns. Um, here's another one, and I just didn't really care for any of those wings. I didn't really care for these wings. I thought that trying to stitch all of that in there would just be a little too intricate. It would get muddy. So I just kept searching until I found wings that I liked. These wings made me happy. Um, I think they're a little easier to stitch through the tool, and I found some wings that I liked. I traced them onto tracing paper, I scanned it, put it in the computer, and then I have a program that allows me to kind of clean up some of the lines and make them look a little nicer. So I saved that, and I want you to notice on these wings, here's a, here's a piece of tracing paper with the same wing on it, um, <clears throat> that I have them on here as one image, and they're spaced exactly the way I want them to fit on my bee. So I didn't do them one at a time and then have to, you know, kind of finagle that one around and see how I liked it and then finagle this side around. This just makes it really easy for me to line the, the wings up right where I want them. So I, I printed my wings on tracing paper. So I printed it out on tracing paper so I had five images on one piece of tracing paper. If you don't know how to trace or to print on tracing paper, um, go to my YouTube channel. I have a little video on how to do that. It's quite simple and it will come in handy for all kinds of things. So once you have your wings uh, cut out, just the one set of wings on tracing paper, and you want to have them on tracing paper so you can see exactly where to line them up. Um, if I didn't have this on tracing paper, it would be a little on the difficult side to make sure I lined them up right where I want them. You also need a piece of tool that is just a little bit larger than your wing cutout. One thing I want to caution you on, there is a way to layer this properly and there's a way to layer this improperly. So you're going to start out with your sky fabric, 
The next layer is your bee body. The next layer is your tool. And the layer on top is your tracing paper pattern. Now I'm gonna just take a moment to line that up exactly where I want it. Once I get it right where I want it, I'm gonna pin it down and I'm gonna use these flathead pins because it's gonna be a lot easier to sew around them than it is uh, a pin with a round head. <clears throat> the tracing paper is a little on the slick side. The uh, tool is a little on the slick side, so you wanna secure that fairly well while keeping your sew lines available to sew on so you don't want your pins to cross your sew line. So I'm gonna pin all the way around and then we'll take this to the sewing machine and get started on the sewing part of it. So I will finish pinning all of these and we'll take it to the machine. Okay, we're gonna sew the wing through the tracing paper, through the tool, and onto the backing fabric. Um, I pulled up my bobbin thread um, and we will get started. Now I am going to attempt to stay on those black lines, but I can guarantee you that I will not be successful and you don't have to be successful in that either. Uh, nobody's gonna see it once you pull the tracing paper off, so no worries if you don't stay right on task. So as you can see, I've sewn over all of the black lines. I didn't stay exactly on every single line, um, but that's not a problem. Once you tear that away, you'll never notice. Okay, so I've sewn both sides of the wings down. And as you can see, I didn't stay on the lines very well on this side at all. This side was a little better, but it, nobody knows that but you and me, so don't tell. All right, now I'm gonna cut this right down the middle because we're gonna get rid of some of this. Um, we wanna rip away the tracing paper. Now, because we stitched on tool, tool is just is a little bit persnickety. So you wanna be kind of gentle pulling this off. You don't have to be super sensitive, but you know, it, it gets its feelings hurt really easily. All right, now I have, I've experimented a number of different techniques in trying to loosen up the uh, tracing paper. And this is the one that works best for me. If you have a better solution, by all means use it. If you have something that you think we could all benefit from, please put a note in the uh, notes below. So I'm gonna take a pen, it's just a straight pen, flathead, and I'm gonna score this paper. I'm going to score it all the way through. I'm kind of going uh, east to west right now on here. And 
Then I'm going to score across this way as well. And a lot of it is coming loose. I can see that it's coming loose. I'm not pushing too hard. I don't want to tear the tool and it will tear fairly easily. So you just want to use a, a gentle touch and loosen it up. So a good portion of it is somewhat loose. And then the best tool that I have found is this one right here. So I'm just gonna scratch, but scratch carefully because you can tear a hole in the tool if you scratch it too hard. So just gently kinda give it a little zhuzh. And you're just gonna keep working at it until you have removed all traces of that tracing paper. Now this is probably the most tedious step in this whole process. I would say it is the tedious. So just take some time, think about something fun and happy and keep working at it. All right, let me get all this off and I will show you what it looks like after that. All right, we've removed all of the tracing paper and I don't know if you can see it very well or not, but I got a little overzealous in my scratching and I have a big old hole in my tool right there. So I don't know about you, but I'm gonna put my OCD aside and just let it stay there and no one else will see it but you and me. All right, <clears throat> now it's time to cut away this excess tool. The easiest way to do that is to pull the tool up so that it is at a 90 degree angle from your work surface. And then with a small pair of scissors, you're gonna hold the tool up and you're gonna cut just above that stitch line. You don't wanna cut right at the stitch line because the tool being so loosely woven will easily pull right out of there. So you don't wanna cut right at the stitch line, just go a little above the stitch line. And I find it easiest, oh, I see that I still have some paper in there, I'll work on that later, um, to turn my piece around while I'm working on it so that I'm cutting straight across from right to left rather than trying to you know, do that type of thing. Just makes it a little easier for cutting Get that all off of there. And there is your wing. With just a few little extra pieces of paper. We'll get rid of those later. All right, now let's cut this second wing. Same thing, you wanna hold the tool at a 90 degree angle to your work surface. Uh, with a small, it's really a lot easier to do this with a small pair of scissors um, than you know a great big pair. So if you have a small pair, grab them. And I have in the past, and I may have just done it again. Yep, I did. I cut right through my stitch line right there. <clears throat> so the way to fix that is just to go back in and uh, sew it down again. Just do another sew line uh, right against the edge of that tool and uh, trap it in there. And that way you can also get the raw ends, uh, the, the uh, ends that you, where you cut the uh, thread away, you wanna make sure that they don't start to unravel. So you can grab, grab the ends, uh, where was it? Somewhere in here. Uh, so you just wanna make sure you sew across um, from where you cut, where you, the thread was cut, across from here to here, so you trap that in there. All right, now we need to get ready to put our little fuzzies on here. And let me show you how we do that. For this section, I wanna transfer all of the black markings from my inspiration photo or inspiration picture um, to my yellow fabric so I know where to sew. So if you look here, there's two eyeballs right there. So I'm gonna color in the eyeballs just to make it easy for me to see them when I'm sewing. And I'm gonna 
sew right over this with black thread. So for this process, I'm actually using a black Sharpie. Um, it is a permanent marker. It is not washable. But I'm going to sew over all the marks I make. So if you see some of the black Sharpie showing through, it's not going to be a problem. Um, if you're not comfortable using a Sharpie, you can use a pencil. You can use uh, one of the pins that disappears when you get it wet or when you put heat on it. Whatever works for you, whatever floats your boat, go for it. All right, so I'm going to mark this black area up here. And I'm going to do that just with a few dots. So this kind of makes an arc. Come on, Sharpie. There you go. Makes an arc around there. And it comes all the way over to here. And this one comes all the way over to there. And there's another arc comes along there, something like that. And then there's a little section of yellow kind of right in the middle there. And another little section of yellow right there. And I'm actually going to make lines for the direction that my stitches are going to go. So I know, first of all, where to sew, how long each of these sections need to be, um, and where each of the stitch marks, uh, each of the stitches will, will show up. So this is just a guideline. Again, I'm gonna cover all of this with um, stitching. So we are good to go on that front. And then there's gonna, well, I'm gonna just draw these in. You're not gonna really see them very well on here, but um, all around the outside edge of the yellow fabric, I wanna add some stitches. Um, when you're stitching over these, the edges of the yellow fabric, make sure to bring your stitches right over that edge. First of all, you want it to look kind of fuzzy like this does here. You want it to look hairy, but also you want to make sure that you're adhering the yellow fabric to your background fabric. All right, so we have that section is left yellow, that section is left yellow, that section is left yellow. So there's a little bit of stitching that goes down under here. All right, now we've got this big yellow oval thing right there. So we're going to stitch around that. And as you can see, my stitches are going to go in the direction that I'm drawing them on here. Just fill that in a little bit. All right, and then underneath this one, there's a fairly it almost goes from edge to edge. A wide little thing there. So these stitches will come along this way. And then we'll add this little section here. And we'll have some stitches that will come along that way as well. And then there's a little section here that stays yellow. And then underneath that is a section that kind of comes down and goes back up. So we want to do a little stitching there. And then a little stitching here. And then these are going to be fairly long stitches all along here. We want to stitch down that way. Again, long stitches here. And we want to stitch down this way. And that's kind of the general idea for what we're going to do. Now I can tweak this a little bit and, you know, mess with it some so that I get it laid out exactly like I want it while I'm stitching. So let's go back to stitching and I'll show you what I mean. I've pulled my bobbin thread up. I'm going to hang on to that, and I am going to freeform zigzag all along here. So I'll zigzag 
maybe over to the eye, and then I'll zigzag back, and I'll come back. And in between each zig, I'm going to try to add another zag. So I'm not trying to cover up the yellow completely, uh, but I do want to make sure I come off the edge of the yellow so, so I can secure that fabric. Um, and then I want to come up and make sure I cover all of my dots. So you can almost, you know, think of this as a video game. Every time you get one of the dots, that can be your point value. All right, let's give it a try. to sew facing me rather than side to side. Um, so I'm just turning the uh, fabric so it's a little easier for me. Again, I'm gonna just sew that eyeball. And I'll come back, zig between my zags. Ooh, point for me. Make sure to come off the edge. And you want it to look a little messy, a little like hair. So you don't want it to be too perfect and too neat, which is a good thing. change the angle of my stitches based on the marks I made with my Sharpie. That kind of shows you the direction the um, fur or hair or fuzz or whatever it is on these, the direction that it's going based on the picture that we have. All right, so here is just his head, the top part of his head. Um, I think I may go back in and fill in some of the spots where there, uh, you know, you can see a whole lot of yellow. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm going to continue this process until we get to the bottom and we're done with it. So the fuzz on a bee is actually called hair, which I discovered when I went to a website called aboutbees.net. And I learned a few things. Um, as the bees visit various flowers, they collect the pollen on their hairs and on their bodies, and they may do something called a buzz pollinate, where they shake the hairs until the pollen comes loose as they travel from flower to flower. Interesting. In the, in the cool weather, the hair on the bee's uh, body helps it keep warm because the fine hairs trap the heat. And then um, it, the fine hairs also pick up vibrations from the atmosphere and can help with their alarm responses. Who knew? Okay, here it is, the finished product. Um, as you can see, it looks kind of fuzzy and hairy all the way around. I tried to cover up as many of the um, lines I made with the permanent marker as I could. But if you look closely, you can see that some of the, per oh, I missed a couple of dots there miss those points um but it doesn't because i used a black marker if it shows not a big deal um now the next and final step would be um and this is only if you want to um add a couple of dots of white paint to the eyes so that you can kind of mimic what they've done here in highlighting the eye um i will do that on my final product with all of them as well um, but I thought you might enjoy learning how to make a bee. 
in this way. I, I was having a blast with it. I love the way it looks kind of fuzzy and generic and not, uh, not exactly perfect. Anyway, thanks for watching.